going to end the show by talking about how the decade has changed the way that we watch things. And my goodness, has it changed a lot since 2010. Van Connor is a film critic and host of the off-screen podcast, also knows about TV. Uh, Van, morning to you. So I suppose at the beginning of the decade, what, what were we? We were, we were love film, weren't we? Discs being sent yeah, through the we, post. Yeah, we were definitely still on the old discs through the letterbox uh, sort of model for our on-demand entertainment at the beginning of the decade. We ended in a very, very different place. We have, haven't we? We now, we now all we have to do is have some kind of a screen that we can watch and we download things, we can watch them on the move, we can irritate people by putting them on loud and actually deciding that the whole train carriage can listen along. <laughs> Very much so. I will tell you that like, after 10 years as a film critic, the one question I now get asked, like the, the, one of the first, quick first questions anyone asks me now is, is there a way that I can just type a film into something and it just tells me where I can stream it? And? Uh, well, the answer to that is yes, there is. It's called Just Watch. But uh, it, as soon as you show someone it, it's apparently something of a life changer. Really? I haven't even heard oh, of that. I hadn't heard of that. <laughs> I, know, I know what I do when I get home. I know. So, so we're all, so we're all on that. But it's also an app as well. Right. So do you pay for, you, and you pay for it, I'm assuming? No, no, no. It's a free website, free app. You just pay for your your subscriptions. But that's that's kind of, for me, the ultimate testimony as to how things have changed. It used to be if someone wanted to see a film, they popped to the nearest supermarket or HMV and they bought the disc for 10 quid. And now, entirely different thing. We've all got these subscriptions. We all pay numerous you know, six, seven pound a month subscription fees. We've all got three or four of these platforms in our homes. Some of us are now TV people. Some of us are Netflix users or Amazon Prime that we get, you know, Prime Video included with our, our shopping subscriptions from Amazon. And it, it's it's interesting that we're now entering another phase. We're entering what's now called the streaming wars that started in the last month or so. So this is only going to get worse. We're only going to have more of these services and more content to sift through and more libraries to have to burrow our way through to find something to watch and it's going to be insane. Well, no wonder Luke's never going to learn a language. Far too many things to do. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh... I'll tell you what the, what the thing is though, is for the people who make the content... Are they going to, uh, th there have been a lot of complaints about, for example, particularly if you're in the music business, how much less money you get. You talk about bands in the past making uh, so much money because, of course, you, you had to buy that. You bought their records, you went to go and see them or whatever. What about the people who make this content? Well, they're now, they're now playing in a much larger field with a lot more players. It's uh, it, it's the case now where you know you look back at the, you look back in this country in, in particular where we used to have five TV channels so you know for for the amount of content getting made that was only you know five players in the game and then Sky came along and started taking a little bit of the uh, a bit of the action away from them and now of course you know we live in the free view era for television so you know there's a billion more channels and then streaming's coming with, no, with well. nothing to watch apart from endless reruns of Top Gear <laughs> exactly it's Top Gear Big Bang Theory and Friends I think that's about <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know and so as, as so are you saying that they have a, a wider audience much smaller remuneration but it is there well i mean there's, there's literally a joke about this on last week's saturday night live i think in the u.s which was that the joke being that literally any tv show can now get made provided it's on an obscure channel that no one's heard of that has its own streaming platform and you're prepared for the audience to only be about 150 people so it, it is kind of that gag of there's more more to go around for fewer people, it would say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. It a, this just, it is incredible, isn't it? But I mean, the, the, and also, I think what I've, I've noticed is that I've started watching, I even start watching things on my phone, which is a bit ludicrous, really, because I need, I, I'm missing all sorts of bits in the background, but it's just that it's handy. I, I'm absolutely the same. Obviously, I commute a lot around central London and, and in uh, the city, so I often just keep things on my phone now, just well, not like new movies or anything, but I tend to keep old TV shows on on my phone, so I can just sort of stand on the tube with the AirPods in and watch old episodes of Stargate or Two and a Half Men or something. Yeah, Daz Army, <laughs> still funny. <laughs> Only falls and horses for me as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's still that one about the la about the chandelier. The sh Always a classic. Yeah, it's a classic, exactly. And and also, Forty Towers still good after all these years. Yeah, porridge as well is still Porridge. Brilliant. So yeah, you yeah. forget how brilliant those shows are. 
Oh, that's the interesting thing as well, because one of the new streaming platforms to pop up this year is that BritBox service. And if you've been on the underground recently, you can't miss it for all the marketing. And this is, uh, I think, a co-production between the BBC and ITV that is a completely free service that is designed to house the litany and archive of all the classic British TV shows and, of course, some of the newer ones as well, some of the dramas, some of your Dr. Fosters, some of your anything starring John Sim, it would seem. And this is yet another streaming service made available to us, but I don't think this one costs money. How do they... So, oh, this is just... Is just yeah, I don't understand how they make Making my money. head spin. There's, how there's, they, where does it all go then? I mean, if they well, don't, is not, is there, are there adverts on it? How, how's it making money? But this one obeys the rules of something like ITV Hub or ITV Play or whatever it's called currently, where it is uh, adverts that you can't skip. Because obviously that's been the, the absolute nightmare, and that's been the thorn in the side of TV networks since the invention of VCR and Sky Plus. Uh, which is, you know, TV used to be, well, it has always been historically driven by ad revenue. And in the old days, before we could record television, before we had catch-up, you couldn't skip those. You had to just get up and go and make a cup of tea. And obviously, nowadays, most of us either watch things on catch-up or we, you know, we, we record them on Sky Plus or whatever we do, and we can just fast-forward through them. So it's proven a bit of a nightmare for advertisers because they have no guarantee now that you will play that advert. You could feasibly you have just got the point. Fern, can uh, you believe the that there are... There are adults, and I say adults because they're over 18, who who have never known the joy of recording something <laughs> onto, onto a video and then playing it back and discovering that you've recorded over something you're meant to keep. <laughs> I still can't believe there are, uh, there, are kid, there are kids in the world who don't know the joy of having to wait through the, uh, the radio top ten every Sunday afternoon to hear that one song they like. <laughs> yeah, so many things that they're missing out on, Van, aren't they? <laughs> Absolutely. But you know, like you say, I mean, it is interesting that we live in this day and age in which, you know, the new Martin Scorsese movie and the new Michael Bay, yeah. $152 million movies, um, they're made available on TV screens in our homes. That is bonkers. I know, I know, and yet cinema seems to be doing really well at the moment. Well, that's the thing, and this is where this is where the streaming thing and, and our viewing habits sort of come together. Uh, the, there is there was a, a conversation had this year about Martin Scorsese and, and Marvel movies and what is and isn't cinema, and the argument got made that actually cinema will be fine as long as these tentpole movies exist, as long as things like Marvel movies exist, because it's it's a very different side of the cultural conversation. People go to a Marvel movie on its opening weekend and they make it earn two hundred and fifty. 300 million in its opening weekend because they want the ability to go back in to work on Monday morning and be part of that water cooler zeitgeist yeah. and conversation. Yeah. And, and, and just sit next to people eating very noisy popcorn because I think that's the way forward. We're going to have to leave it there, but thank you very much, Fan. And thank you very much to Stephen Allen. And thank you very much.